Okay, and what we have here is a Carrier 92% um, condensing natural gas furnace. Um, you guys, I'm sure many of you have seen this in my video before. Um, this does the, uh, the first floor of the house, and it does uh, two separate zones, which I'll explain in a bit. And uh, here it is. I've seen it, uh, you guys have seen this before in other videos, and I'm sure you'd like to see it more in detail now. Uh, this furnace is definitely very efficient. It really, um, really keeps the house warm and cool during the winter and summer. Um, it's natural gas, as you can see. Uh, here's the uh, two panels. A lot of metal, which I'm very happy about. And there's also some internal insulation on some of these ducts here, which is really nice uh, to add to it. And let's see, uh, these here are the uh, furnace pipes, and those are the refrigerant lines for the air conditioning. So I think the evaporator is in here somewhere, and the heat exchanger is down there. Um, yes, yeah, so up here, these are two zone dampers, okay? Zone 1, which is this one right here, is for the main first floor area, and Zone 2 is for the master bedroom and master bathroom on the first floor. Uh, these dampers are spring-loaded to be open, so right now um, the, the springs are holding them open. Um, the way they close is, some of you may remember the video I made of the slant fin boiler back in 2011. Um, these kind of work in a similar way as those water valves. Basically what happens, what happens is a coil energizes and kind of like a motor, it forces the damper to the closed position against the spring tension. And then once it stop, stops moving, the coil holds it there by the magnetic force. And then it... And then, it, yeah, it keeps the damper closed in that, in that position. And then once the coil de-energizes, the springs force the damper back open. So right now, neither damper is energized. It's just a spring held open right now. I can show you what the um, look, thing looks like. So you have closed, open. I think that's like a manual override of sorts. And you can see the green LED for open and the red LED for closed. So, um, so it's very interesting how those come into play. And over here we have a little board. Let me see, let me get this light on for you. Because it may be kind of dark. And now that looks too bright. Okay, there we go, that, that looks okay. This is basically what helps control the dampers. Uh, this is, um, I guess, a control uh, made by Honeywell. And you can see right there, first floor main house, and then master suite first floor, that's one and two. But you can see it has heat, cool, fan, purge, and zones one, two, and three. Um, we can have three zones, but this one doesn't. We just have two. But if there was a third one, it would come into play. And basically what happens here is I'd love to show you how this board works during the cycling, but there's just no way for me to do that. So uh, basically what happens is in this case, when I turn on the thermostat for heat, the heat LED, which is red, is going to come on, and then zones two and three are going to go red, and then the zone two damper which I showed you right there, is going to start to close. And then once the burner shuts off and the blower is still running, um, it's going to go from heat to purge, which is an amber LED, and for the most part stay the same. And then once the blower finally shuts off, after it's removed a lot of the heat from the heat exchanger, um, the purge light is going to shut off, and then all three zones will go back to green, and basically the zone two damper, uh, two, <laughs> the zone two damper will open right back up. And over here is the condensate drain um, for the furnace and air handler itself. This part is for the air conditioning. This little part here that you see going inside is for the heating. Yes, this does come in, into play with heating, and I'll show you in a bit. And there's the condensate pump right there. The condensate pump is made by Diversitec. Can you see the name there? Yeah, there it is. And so far, so good. It does what it's supposed to, so I'm happy about that. Okay, and this is a direct, a di wow, I'm really mispronouncing words. This, this is a direct vent furnace, and what that means is when the inducer is running and the front panel is on, it takes air from the outside of the house, okay, which is over there, those two pipes. You may recognize that basement window, and the pipes are over there. Okay, um, it takes air from the outside of the house, okay, runs it through the heat exchanger, obviously, and provides the air for the burners to operate. And then, obviously, the gas, um, the exhaust gas, comes back out through here, and then goes back out, and then goes out that pipe on the side, which makes a really nice amount of steam when it's cold outside. Maybe in the future I'll show that to you. 
But anyway, um, the, um, this, like I said, this is a 92% efficient furnace, and it definitely is because um, on a normal furnace that has a metal um, exhaust pipe, when that thing is fully heated up, if you put your hand on, on that pipe, it's going to burn your hand, no, no doubt about it. But this pipe just gets very warm. Like you can, actually, you, you can legit keep your hand on this pipe, and it will not harm you whatsoever. I mean, just, just the fact that they're using PVC pipe is just, just shows you that... Um, just shows you that, um, it, like, most of the heat is going through your vents and not out the side of the house, which is very, very efficient design, definitely. What we have up here is a whole house humidifier uh, made by Honeywell, as you can see. Basically, it's um, it's connected to one of the house uh, uh, one of the house's cold water lines right there. It goes in here, and where is it? The valve is right inside there, and then any excess drains right out of this tube into the condensate pump. Um, our house really, never really gets that dry to operate, but maybe sometime in the heating season it might. And um, it's called a bypass. You can see there's one on the return duct and one on the discharge duct, and it just uses the different air pressure to direct the air uh, which way to go. And um, up here is the humidistat for the device. Um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, it is not 74% humidity upstairs. It's just, it's just um, reading that right now because um, it's currently shut off. It reads different. I mean, the air is shut off. It currently reads different when air is not moving, when air is moving. Um, the backlight is normally on auto. I just put it to on for now just so you can see what the humidistat looks like. And we currently have it set to 40%. So unless it gets below that, this thing won't really operate much. But then again, we haven't fully been here yet for a very cold winter. So we're going to see how that um how, how that turns out when we uh, get to that point of the uh, season. Okay, now let's have a look inside. Removing this panel is easy enough. You just turn both these knobs. Um, you can turn them in either direction. You just so they're facing left to right instead of up and down. Okay, and get this out. There we go. Now we'll just put this down right here. Okay, and here's the internals of the, um, of the furnace. Simple enough. Um, a lot of parts I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, here's your inducer right here. Um, here's the pressure switch. Um, here's the exhaust pipe. Uh, your gas valve and your burners and you know the flame sensor is over here and the hot service igniter is over there. And the condensing portion kind of happens within within here. Let me explain that. Okay. You see this yellow tube right here? All right. Um, the, the condensing collection side there, or happens in there, okay? Then it goes down this yellow tube into the water trap, which is this thing right here, okay? And then as it, as it collects water, it goes out through this tube to the left behind the pressure switch. Um, out the side, there it is. Out the side, and there's that pipe I told you about, and it goes into the condensate pump. Now... It doesn't run all that much uh, too often, though, so it is good in that regard. Also because the furnace doesn't run that much, which is definitely efficient in itself. And basically, uh, the condensate pump pumps into the, into the house drain up there instead of, um, instead of outside. Because, um, you know, especially if you're going to be using this in the heat, if you make the condensate go outside, if it gets too cold, then there could be an ice dam in the tube, and then the water's going to overflow in there. So it's not, uh, not a good idea to have that. Uh, let's see. Um, so this is the 92% efficient furnace, and um, uh, this furnace is not variable speed. It's just on or it's off, and to be honest with you, I kind of prefer that, to, to be honest. I just like that more. Um, but uh, what is variable, if you want to call it that, is the blower motor. Um, it's two-speed. Um, it does low speed for heating and high speed for air conditioning. I mean, why they wanted to do it that way, I don't know, but whatever, it does fine. And it makes plenty of noise on low speed as well, so you know me, I'm very happy about that. And um, here's some information on the inducer motor. Hopefully I can um, get a shot of that for you. Let me see. Can you bear with me for a moment? Um, there you go. It's made by Broad Ocean. <laughs> that's very, uh, that's very appropriate. I'm guessing that's the horsepower, that three-quarter there. And let's see, 115 volts, 60 hertz. Um, Looks like 16.9 watts. That's a very interesting. Uh, that's a very interesting um, or to exact uh, rating, and two uh, p. I guess two phase, and it is thermally protected. And um, this is the fan for outside. It spins this way when it's operating. I love that you can actually see the spin. Well, provided that the um, that the uh, front panel is off. 
And like I said, the burners are up in here. Um, that's a, a roll. That's a rollout sensor over there, I think. And I think there's another one over here somewhere. And that little thing right there, that's the high limit thermostat. Where um, if it gets too hot, that'll trigger, and then it'll, sh it'll cause the burners to shut off until the um, until the heat exchanger cools down some. And what's nice about the way this is set up is that when the burner shuts off, the inducer keeps running for about like 10 to 12 more seconds, which is great because that helps ensure that all the exhaust gas is out of there and outside of the house. So I really like how they designed that. Very, very good design. And uh, so like I said, the inducer is actually pretty quiet. You can hear it run a little bit, but when the burner comes on, the burner is a lot louder than the inducer in this case. So it definitely, um, it definitely kind of a cool sound effect. But you'll hear it run better, uh, pretty well when you see it with the uh, panel off. Um, and yeah, it's basically it. The only thing, the only complaint I have, kind of like that Lennox furnace I made a video on, is that well, this one I think does a little bit better. I still think the blower comes on a little too soon um, after the burner comes on. Did I say blower first? I may have, but if I didn't, that's what I meant. Um, meant okay. Um, and yeah, this is like a rubber coupling for the pipe, which is very interesting. And it goes to show you that it doesn't get too hot because if this got as hot as a regular furnace, they wouldn't put something like this on here. It'd be a, it'd definitely be a metal thing. So, um, all right. So with all that said, let's go ahead and give this a run up for you. Okay, and just to let you guys know, um, when I first turn it on, you may hear a buzzing noise um, as soon as it clicks on. That's that's going to be the damper for the um, for zone 2 closing. Sometimes it does that buzzing, sometimes it doesn't do that, but if you hear that, that's what it is, okay? Just so you guys know. Alright, let me go run upstairs and uh, get it on. You see what I mean? Very, very loud burners. Okay, and I think the blower just turned on. Yep, it did turn on. So you see what I mean? I don't think it really runs, uh, the burner runs long enough before the uh, blower comes on. I mean, now, like I said, it's only going to get warmer from here, but still, I think it's just better that um, it gets, it, like, there's a lot more heat already stored in the heat exchanger before it starts running the heat through. But, uh, yeah, so, there's uh, your flames. The camera is making it look a lot brighter than it is, but it is still a nice shade of blue. And right now, if, you know, if the, um, if the front panel is off, that's where the uh, air was on, rather, that's, that's where the air would be coming from up there. And the inducer motor is currently running. You'll probably hear it make a sound. It just I don't recommend doing this, but hear that? Yep. And then there's the uh, pressure switch, which uh, the pressure switch is what detects the uh, the negative pressure from the inducer before letting the um, before letting the um, what do you call it a uh, burner ignite. There's the exhaust. A little warm already. Yeah, a little bit warm here. And like I said, whenever this thing cycles on, it's really awesome because it runs for about maybe, um, oh, I don't know, it runs for about maybe, like, not even five minutes, or maybe five minutes, and then it's off for, like, 15 or 20 minutes, so it's definitely not using too much gas, which is great. Like I said, the inducer is very quiet. Very quiet indeed. And we also have a CO detector right there. Definitely need to have that. So let me show you the dampers. Um, you can see uh, the zone 1 hasn't changed, but if you look on zone 2, you can see that the LED has switched um, over, to, over to red. And now this thing, instead of pointing at open, it's pointing to closed. See that? And on the board here, let, let me get that light again. Maybe I don't need the light. Hold on, let me see. 
I think you can see that. The heat LED is now on, which is red. This is just glowing from that red light. The camera's making it brighter than it actually is. And you can see zones two and three have gone red while zone, while zone one is still green because that's, that's the zone that's calling for heat. And like I said, when the burner shuts off, this is going to switch from heat to purge. And then once the purge finishes, this is going to shut off completely and these are all going to go back to green. So um, there you have it. Now, the camera probably isn't picking it up, but there's, um, the, the installation makes this like crinkling noise as, as the uh, duct inside heats and cools down, which is kind of nice. Almost sounds like water um, flowing, which is kind of a calm sound, I guess. And just to show you, look up at the humidistat. You can see that the humidity has definitely gone down some now that the air is actually moving through. So, um, yeah, it is pretty humid outside today. In fact, it's raining tonight, so that could be part of the reason. So, yeah, so the, the, the humidifier currently isn't running, but that's where it is. But, yeah, just check out those burners. And you can see them uh, protruding from the carryover tubes a little bit, which is really cool. So I'll put my hand here again. Yeah, a lot warmer, but this is not hot at all, guys. Like, this is not hurting my hand whatsoever. Put my hand on this pipe. It's just warm. That's all it is. By now, a metal one would be way too hot to touch. So this is definitely, you know, directing all the heat through the uh, vents more than it is to the exhaust pipe, which is great. And the inducer is running beautifully. You know, just for a little fun here, let me go uh, turn off the lights and see how that looks um, with that. I gotta keep this one on, I can't even see anything. There we go, okay. Uh, not too much to see. Actually on the camera, that, that does look kind of spooky. <laughs> but in person, that you don't really notice it that much. But that is uh, pr pretty cool. Definitely. And turn those lights back on. There we go. All right. So, and yeah, once again, the humidistat has gone down even more. Okay, so let me go uh, run upstairs and uh, shut the thermostat off. You can actually see the, the inducer spin down. It has a great spin down time. And there you go. So like I said before, if we go back to the board, See, now the uh, purge LED is on and zone and zones two and three are still green until the blower shuts off. So right now the blower is um, the blower is removing all the heat that it can and it does run for a decent amount of time. So because you, you, you don't want the vents to completely cool down by the time it shuts off, you want it to be giving some heat still. But yeah, it really has great performance and everything. Okay, if I look back at the damper, you should see a change as soon as the blower shuts off, which shouldn't take much longer. Like I said, when it opens back up, it de-energizes and the springs force it back open. <laughs> see? And what just happened right there was the, it, the coil de-energized and the springs forced it back open. And as you can see, we're right back to where we started. All of these are off and all the zones are back to green. Okay guys, so there you have it. That is the Carrier 92% um, Condensing Natural Gas Furnace. Very good machine, does the job, makes plenty of noise like, <laughs> like I always say. And, 
and does a great job on keeping the house heated and cool in the summer. All right, so as usual, guys, thank you very much for watching, and take care.